Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to review the Chanel Spring Summer 2024 collection by Virginie Via Prêt à Porter that just hit the runway at Paris Fashion Week. And for the occasion, I have built a little wheat moment, very, very Coco inspired. Coco Chanel loved her wheat. It's a symbol of prosperity, wealth, good luck, good fortune. She surrounded herself with wheat all the time. In fact, there's a lot of costume jewelry as well as jewelry that she co-designed uh, with Coussins that involved wheat and Salvador Dali painted one little strain of wheat to gift to her. That painting was in her collection by Salvador Dali. So they were big friends. I added my uh, Chanel Metier da 2020, what was it, 2022 brooch to this wheat bundle. It's so, so, so beautiful. Classic, classic Chanel. This is, it doesn't get more classic than this when it comes to Chanel at least. So, you yeah, guys, uh, the fashion show is, uh, is a video taken from the Chanel YouTube channel, so we will be reviewing it, hence it falls under fair use. I have just changed the music to copyright free music. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball Spell Together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my uh, members and patrons who already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week. You're all welcome to join the live chats. Hi to my ch co chators. Uh, let's get this party started. And I'm going to keep the wheat while we talk about the show. Now, there is a video at the beginning. It's like a three-minute video. Uh, we're going to kind of fast forward through that video to get to the actual runway. So bear with me as we fast forward through it. So this is the presentation. They're like ready to wear show. The show's about to begin. We have this kind of artsy moment happening. Let me scroll through. You know, through the windows, show is about to start, show is about to start. It's about three minutes. And almost there. Yeah. All right, here we go. Chanel Spring Summer 2024, ready to wear. A bunch of flowers, I love my florals. I'm a sucker for flowers, always have, always will. Uh, and we have the first look, and this is what I said, Virginie is thinking about me with the chains and the sunglasses. Now those were made better in the 90s for the fall winter 1992 collection. They were made as sunglasses with a chain, straight cut, very hip hop, gorgeous design. Still today, one of the most iconic sunglasses by Chanel. Now they've made the modernized version, like the reading version, not straight cut at the top, but more. They're a little bit more conservative now. They're, they tried to do the straight cut for the sunglass version. It's a tinier chain. Oh yes, baby. You take them off, honey, and I'll buy them. <laughs> Definitely buying those. Also buying the reading glass version. And see, buying these as well. Tick, tick, tick. You know, they know how to push all the buttons. Unfortunately, it's stuff, it's nothing new, right? We've seen it already in the 90s. It's just a slightly modified version of it. But you know what? I'll take what I can get at this point from Chanel. Now, when it comes to the clothes, again, Virginie is touching base on 80s fashion. Oh, we got a little bit of 20s, 30s vibes going on here. It is eclectic. But then again, don't forget, the 80s also had a lot of mix and matching in it. There was an 80s that was referencing the 40s. There was an 80s that was, that was referencing the 60s. There was an 80s that was referencing the 50s. And this, this is kind of what you get in this show. Very 80s vibes, very 70s vibes, a hint of 90s, and most importantly, comfortable. You see, when a woman designs for women, this little top, cute, super cute. This little denim top, super cute. This, look at this little kind of top here. I don't want to say jacket because I don't see any buttons there. Comfortable, cozy. Some things are more tailored for bigger silhouettes. Some things are less tailored. Look at this, very forgiving. You can cover yourself in your swimsuit. You can hide the swimsuit if you want to, you know what I mean? Then you have the more kind of Y2K moments, but also could be a little bit hippie-esque. They're going down as well. 
colors, we got all the neutrals as usual, plus the pinks. The tweed had to be present for a Chanel fashion show. Gloves, we've seen at YSL, we see gloves as well at Chanel. Some trend setting company probably told all these brands that gloves you know, should come back for summer 2024. I don't think a lot of people are going to wear gloves uh, in summer, but they are back. Several brands have been showing gloves. Those tiny litter bags, the tiny 22 bag or the tiny little lunch bag. I'm still not accepting Chanel leathers. Love this jacket. Skirt combo, love this little cardigan jacket, giving me 20s Chanel, covering the other jacket. Listen, Virginie has done her homework. Those are directly referenced. Look at this, we got finally another model that is not just the one token model. She's more healthy looking and curvy. We're also gonna get our token model that we always have at Chanel, but now we have two of them that are a little bit more healthy looking. Uh, Virginie has done her homework. She has researched and she has dug out of the archives the classic Chanel pieces. She's also done this, which is a monstrosity in my opinion because it dangles really poorly on the body. But whatever, you needed one of those pieces, I guess, you know, the editorial ones as well. But most of these pieces are very wearable. The references to the early 20s, but also the late 10s by Coco Chanel, very fascinating. Look at this asymmetry that she's playing with here. She's daring to go a little bit. Look at this now. Coco also did this asymmetry back in the day, especially this ribboning, this kind of chevron ribboning uh, bordure, very, very typical for Coco for the 60s. Mm, the glasses again, patchwork vibes, total either early 90s, just about to enter the grunge era, but also very, very much hippie vibes very much the patchwork hippie vibes. And then we got the more the classy version of that with the black and white. Again, that ribboning is really beautiful. The asymmetry, you know what? I'm happy. I don't mind the asymmetry. It's been a while that we've had everything perfectly symmetrical at Chanel. Playing a little bit with that asymmetry from now and now and then is, is okay uh, for me. I am really getting used to the aesthetic of Virginie and the direction. There you go. She used to be our only token model. Not anymore. She is gorgeous. And by the way, she looks healthy. Uh, it's a pity that she's still kind of, two of them are the token models. There should be way more women like, like the two ladies on this runway. Um, now, when it comes to the stripes, the lines, the textures, the combination of materials, I think Virginie is very clever. Oh, look at that little baglet. Oh, I kind of love a little top handle with a little clip closure, clasp closure. Ooh, that's a cutie. Not gonna sell very well, but I, I love that 50s reference. See, now we're going into the 50s, like a 40s, 50s reference when that little bag. This can also be very 40s, the way that the shoulders were done. Very, very Chanel. You might not think so, but Coco did a lot of whimsical pieces and experimental pieces back in her day. You know, we only remember her for certain ensembles and tweeds, but she did way more than that. The woman was active for many decades. Look at the interesting lines and patterns going vertical and horizontal. Uh, this is giving me cruise collection vibes, which is fascinating. And I do think for a second there, I thought, oh, is Chanel discontinuing the cruise line? Are they just gonna do now summer? You know, the summer collection is gonna deliver cruise and summer. I love this combo, by the way. Yes, it's a huge logo, but you know what? A lot of these pieces are toning down the logo. We're playing this, you know, economy, you know, let's not show off the logo too much, but then there's like that one piece showstopper that has the logo. That top is gonna be the best seller just because of the logo, trust you me. Um, but we're playing it safe without the logos, right? But it's also very Chanel at the same time. Coco did a lot that Virginie is referencing here and a lot of people might not recognize it and people are kind of calling Virginie out, you know, like, oh, boring, boring, boring. Her shows do tend to blend into one another from time to time, but she's falling into her own place. I'm liking more and more the evolution of Virginie and Chanel. Now this little bag, leather bag that mimics a 40s slash 50s camera case for a analog click-click camera it's kind of that whimsical, look at that 22 bag with stripes. It's a 22, I think that's the backpack. That's the 22 backpack. Um, so they're referencing a lot of these things. So like I said, I was thinking that, oh, cruise collection, are they gonna discontinue the cruise collection? 
I would be all for Chanel discontinuing one collection and just giving less pressure on the production so that they can produce better quality. They don't need 10 collections a year. Uh, so I would be all in favor of them mixing cruise with summer. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. That was just my wishful thinking because some of these pieces really are giving major cruise vibes. This one, major cruise vibes. Huh, the sunglasses. Yes, they have the Chanel logo all over them. Do I want them? Yes, I want them. <laughs> they have not had so many Chanel sunglasses hitting the runway in decades, okay? Where I say, I gotta get one, two, three, four, like five models. You know what I mean? That's a lot. I don't know if all of them are gonna go into production though. I hope they will. And like I said, forgiving. A lot of these pieces can be worn by any body shape and type. Virginie is clever in separating, like giving us separates. You can combine mix and match pieces. Something Vivian West would also use to do, very forgiving in terms of, um, you can buy something from this summer collection, from 2024, and it's gonna go really well with what you already purchased in summer of 2022 or 2023. So these are addable, stackable pieces that go really well together. Now you could debate and say, well, that, she's boring, she's repetitive, you know, so all these things go together because it's always the same. I beg to differ. There's slight nuance and there's daring in what she's doing from collection to collection. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the current costume jewelry that her designer, costume jewelry design team is delivering. So I'm kind of just forget about the costume jewelry for the most part. She's not delivering that quintessential Chanel costume jewelry. She's focusing more, or her team is focusing more on the little tiny crystal bedazzled pieces that just look fake to me. I don't like them. Now this floral pattern, let me tell you, oof, it's a bit much with the double C logo, but I love the flower and I love the colorway. Love the cardigan. I, I do love that big flower on the chest. I know it looks so conservative and cliche, but there's something about it. It makes me feel safe. And isn't that, at the end of the day, what kind of vision he's delivering for Chanel? This kind of feel of comfort, you're pampered, you know Chanel is always gonna be there. No matter what happens to the world, Chanel will survive. Um, I'm not a big fan of these skirts and dresses that are kind of short in the front and then they go like long in the back because then usually you end up seeing um, the inner part of the dress and I've seen close-ups of these pieces they're not really tailored that well, so you kind of see the inlay, the lining a little bit wrinkled, a little bit pulling on one side, and the Chanel was zubera, zubera. Uh, but I love a floral pattern. Yes, florals for spring and summer, groundbreaking. I'm a sucker for flowers, what can I tell you? I'm wearing colors today too, actually. I'm wearing the Fiorucci kind of denim shirt, cotton, 80s. Again, I'm totally 80s today. Uh, 80s print and pattern of the scorched posters that became super famous in the 80s. Fiorucci is bringing them back now. Similar colorways to what we're seeing on the runway at Chanel at the moment. And now the flowers in the as the background for the runway are not extremely Chanel. You know what I mean? We could have done without those flower prints in the runway, but I just I really really like this flower floral pattern even with the logo. I would not buy them for myself. I think that's way too much logo overkill. But if they took off the CC logo and just did the flowers, I would really enjoy those pieces. And here we have the run through of the entire show again. And you can see how interestingly she combines the colors. You see, we've seen the YSL show, we've reviewed it together. And everything was in those earthy tones, neutral tones, the beige, you know, the ochre. Here what we get is black, white, blue, red, pink, denim, more pink, another nuance of pink, a hint of orange, there's purple, there's a bit of glitter, you know, there's texture, there's the tweed, there's the jersey, there's the cotton, there's the pilette, there's the sequin, there's the silk. She's giving, there's the patchwork. She's delivering a ginormous selection within a collection. You might say it's not cohesive. To me, it actually is cohesive 
because the framework of the garden and of the flower is what's going to frame this entire ad campaign and it's going to make it recognizable. Are we going to remember this show four years from now? No, we won't. But we will be, if we purchase some of these pieces and if the quality of these pieces is good, we will still be wearing them a few years from now because they're timeless. That's, that's the twist here. Minus the big pattern pieces, okay? If you buy the big all over print pieces, oh, there she is, Vision. You did well, darling. Here, this little bouquet is for you, sweetie. It's all for you, sweetie. You did real. Oh, is that Coco on her t shirt? Oh. Hold on a minute. Was that Coco on the back of Vision's t shirt? Can somebody tell me in the chats? Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Oh, I was just a second. Was that Coco? Y'all, was that Coco on her t-shirt? Are they selling this t-shirt? I want this t-shirt. Uh, it's What did they do to her eyes, though? Is that Coco? It looks like Coco. Yes, yeah, Coco in a hat, says Nat. But why are her eyes like... Why doesn't she have pupils in her eyes? Is it some, like, morphed... Kev says, it kind of looks like Coco. I can't tell, says Powell. Debbie says, I think it's Coco. Yes, yeah, Coco in a hat. Yeah, no, that's not Coco, says Hella Barbara Rank. That's not Coco. I want that, says Corey. It looks like doing a peace sign. It looks like Coco to me. It looks like Coco's chin and Coco's nose. But um, peace sign fingers over the eyes. Oh, really? Like this? I respectfully disagree with you, Jacob. I love my logos. I love my loud logos on my bags, dresses, and shirts. I never said I don't like logos. I'm saying I get tired of a piece that has logos all over it because it doesn't age very well. Ten years from now, you're going to find it in your closet. You're going to wear it again, and you're going to rediscover it, and then it's all good and fine. But I, I can't... Logofy, Logofy every day. Too much for me. But to each their own. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying not for me. Um, Hello, Barbara Rank says this is obviously not Coco. I would not be that sure uh, about that. But um, who is it? Who is it then, y'all? This is obviously not Coco. Who is it? <laughs> Tell me who this is, you guys. Does anybody know in the comment section down below? Let, let me know. Virginie Villard in the chat says, oh, it's not Coco. The jawline was Coco. Yeah, I agree with you, Debbie, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Well, if it wasn't Coco, if it obviously wasn't Coco, then who was it, obviously? Can somebody let me know? AI Coco? Was it an AI-generated Coco? Very 30s kit sportswear, which is very Coco. Also, there's bed bugs in Paris, you guys. Was that a bed bug? On Virginie's t-shirt? Was that like a print of a huge bed, a close-up of a bed bug printed on Virginie's t-shirt? Because uh, as we know, uh, Paris is going through a, an infestation of bed bugs at the moment. It's all over the news. The mayor is talking about it. Macron is talking about it too. Macron, the stories I've heard... Give us a call, will ya? We gotta talk sometime. But until then, let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. Ah, Teresa McGuire says, it was Coco. Ha-ha! Teresa gets the last word on this video. Love you loads, comments, and thoughts down below. And until next time, subscribe and never give up on love. Bye. Mwah.